guys. Welcome to our talk today. And as you know, I'm your local realtor, Des Gojik Mahal, here at Remax Kamosin. Today I have with me Harjot with World Financial Group. He is a financial advisor. And we're going to talk today about RRSP, which is your registered retirement savings plan. <laughs> savings plan. And we're going to talk about that today. And uh, it is almost around the corner here, so it might be uh, top of mind for everyone. So welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to ask you some questions today. First about yourself. Uh, tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah, so my name is Harjot Gil. Thank you guys so much for the lovely introduction. I was born and raised in Victoria, BC. Just went to Mount Doug High School over there. And then uh, for university, I just recently graduated from University of Waterloo. Uh, there I did a joint major in biotech and econ. Uh, so it's just a little bit of science and business, right? But I truly have a passion in, you know, financial services. I, I love real estate as well, which I, which is why I connect so much with Des too. What, what I try to do is, what, what, one of my major goals is to give as much value as we can to the end consumer and just to help as many people as I can. That's great. So science and business. Yeah. <laughs> how do those mix? Do they mix? No, I'm just joking. No, no. <laughs> it's a wonderful, uh, you know, it's good that you have that background you have the best of both worlds yeah exactly. the way i look at it right yeah, <laughs> yeah. so the, the major thing is that science and business they don't mix per se but when you look at the the products right every part product needs to be marketed for it to be profitable yeah so the, the major problem in the market was scientists can't talk business language business people can't talk the science so you have somebody in the middle who can do both and then but both sides are better off they got her jut now yeah, that's I mean, exactly. yeah that's great good to know uh, so tell us, like, what do you do, like, outside of work? Yeah, so <laughs> outside of work, I uh, actually, like, I love to keep a busy schedule. You know, I'm always either playing basketball, I'm working out. I also also do a sick martial art called Gatka as well. Oh, do you? Uh, yeah, so that's why I have so many scars on my face. <laughs> good, yeah. that's good. So what are your personal goals and passions? Well, I, I definitely love basketball, right? I, I, lo I love fitness. I, I love working out. So I, I think it's important to split your life in a couple different buckets. Mm -hmm. So one of them is obviously, you know, the fitness and it's stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, goals and hobbies and whatnot. There's uh, financial and then there is the spiritual side as well. So I, I, I like to be an all rounder. You know, so I have my own goals for the, my, my, my faith as well. I have my own goals for, for fitness and then I have my own, uh, own goals for business as well. That's great. Harjo, can you tell us a bit about your team and also if you speak any other languages? Yeah, for sure. So our team is actually very diverse. Uh, we have people, first of all, all over Canada, mm -hmm. you know, name a province and we, we have an associate there, right? Uh, and then also from a diverse uh, backgrounds as well, right? So we have uh, English is a given, right? Uh, but also Punjabi, uh, Hindi, Nepali, uh, Filipino, you know, basically a a any Southeast, Southeastern like, language as well as like Spanish, French, and stuff as well. Okay, then what do you speak? Uh, I, 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 I mainly speak uh, English and Punjabi. Okay. Uh, but I can understand Hindi and bits and pieces of Urdu as well. Okay, yeah, no, that's great. That's... Okay, so now let's talk about RRSPs. So tell us, what is an RRSP? Okay, so an RRSP is actually a very unique product. Mm -hmm. uh, so it essentially is a savings and investment vehicle that is used primarily for retirement. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that we put pre-tax money in, so money that we did not pay tax on, and we actually get a little bit of a tax deduction when we invest in our RSP. Okay. Right. So depending on how much tax we are paying right now and what our marginal tax rate is, we could actually end up paying less tax on that money. And then we're also simultaneously investing towards our retirement. That's great. I mean, it's very important for everyone to save for their retirement. Oh, definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what are the benefits and advantages of an RRSP? Right, so when we think about the RRSP, the advantages of it, so the, the main one is definitely the tax deduction, right? Mm -hmm. So taxes are amazing, they pay for our schools, our roads, but another important thing, especially for Canadians, where we have a very high cost of living, is pay the right amount of tax, which is fair for us, right? So getting that tax deduction is definitely nice, as well as you know, having the ability to save and grow money for our long term. Because when you think about it, you know, with this the, with the uh, market that we're in right now it's so hard to save money like for now and then let, let alone retirement right so just being able to have uh, an account that we have some incentives where we can invest and grow our money that that's amazing so i think talking about investing like um i know traditionally 
back in the days especially yeah a lot of our ancestors when they'd come to canada and stuff they would be traditionally just investing in gic's and stuff which yeah. um at the end of the day 10 years later there's no purchasing power left right mm -hmm. they're still sitting at basically what they were at exactly so now tell us what about different investment options so people can you know kind of maintain that purchasing power so if today an orange costs you know two dollars yeah. they can buy it when it costs six dollars right so oh man <laughs> imagine just going to the grocery going down to walmart and just buying six dollar oranges <laughs> i can't, can't imagine it but imagine, that yeah. is the future right mm -hmm. so the the thing is, is that in an rsp we have to think of it as a savings vehicle mm -hmm. right so although money is going there we can actually take that money and invest it in some sort of uh, uh, other asset class so well, what are the asset classes? The main ones are, everybody knows about stocks and bonds. Uh, some people know about mutual funds, segregated funds, and also ETFs as well. So basically everything other than I'd say cryptocurrency is currently available uh, in the RSP, but who knows, maybe that's gonna be available soon too. The cryptocurrency? Oh, well, we'll see. Well, Give me a call, yeah. okay, that oh, Okay, for sure. <laughs> That makes sense, right? Like there's mutual funds and you've got so many other options, like you mentioned, that everyone can invest into. And uh, you you guys, you just sit down with everyone, to my knowledge, and kind of find the right fit for them. Yeah. So, because I, I believe like some people have different personalities. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and what's the right fit for their overall goal, right? Yeah. And even the life, like if somebody's investing at 20 mm -hmm. versus somebody investing at 50 might have different... Um, you know, outcomes, and this is a big question. Okay. Homes. Homes. Let's buy a house. Can you use your RSP to buy a house? This is an important question. I mean, I get asked all the time. And... Yeah, so the thing about the RRSP, although it's called the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, is that it's not just for retirement. We can actually use a provision called the Home Buyers Plan, uh, which is honestly such a great incentive because we can use our hard earned uh, retirement savings, and we can actually, if you're a first time home buyer, we can take a chunk out of it, maybe $35,000. So that, that's a maximum. But we can use any amount up to that $35,000 as part of the down payment for our first home. Right? Obviously, there are some things that you need to qualify for and some li limits as well. But it's definitely something that we can use. The question I get asked a lot is, do they have to repay that amount? Yeah. So the thing about the uh, home buyer's plan is that we do have to recontribute the amount that we took out. But we do have a 15-year window. To pay that back so you know 15 years is quite a long time to mm -hmm. pay back any, any of that amount if we take the thirty-five thousand, you know, that's roughly you know two to three thousand dollars every year it's great that you can use it so tell us about uh rsps or the tfsa savings account right so the thing is the rsp and tfsa they're both amazing products and i believe honestly everybody should have both right because with the rsp we do get that tax deduction mm -hmm. and we do have that long-term retirement savings plan mm -hmm. right for our retirement right mm -hmm. so the thing is is that let's say let, uh, we have a project or something we want to invest in for the short term or it can even be emergency savings mm -hmm. so if we wanted to, if we thought about uh, investing our emergency savings in our rsp that's not a good idea because if we withdraw before retirement we're going to have to pay some heavy taxes right so if you if you withdraw prematurely for the rsp you're gonna have to pay taxes so instead of that, what we can do is invest in a TFSA, so tax-free savings account. Mm -hmm. Now, something about the TFSA is what exactly is tax-free in the tax-free savings account? And that is the growth on the principal, mm -hmm. the growth on the money. So even if I put $1 in and somehow that $1 turns into 10000 I will not have to pay tax on that 10000 when I withdraw it. Oh, wow. right? So it doesn't matter how much it grows, but whatever we withdraw, that is tax-free. But it's also can be invested just like in mutual funds in different areas as well. That's yeah, great. Exactly. So it's an investment vehicle, mm -hmm. right? So if I give you an example of a car, right? Somebody drives a truck, somebody drives a Honda, somebody drives a Ferrari, right? So these are all different types of vehicles. Now it depends on the driver, how they drive the vehicle as well. So the vehicle is the account. So RSB TFC, the driver is the type of asset. So some people like to, you know, drive really recklessly going crazy, right? On, on the highways. So you can do that in a minivan. You can do that in a Honda. Right. So it doesn't really matter what the account is. It matters what the asset class is as well. Or you can also drive at 20 kilometers an hour in a Ferrari too. Yeah. Right. Great. That's great. So again, you would re like just like whenever you're investing, you would just look at the overall picture of where this person fits, like, you know, by doing usually it's a whole bunch of questions, right, yeah. to kind of understand their uh, tolerance level of, where, you know, if they're 
a risk taker or if they're, you know, low risk or medium risk. And, you know, you kind of mentioned funds or other investments accordingly to that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there, there's no such thing as a, as a one shoe fits all like financial strategy solution. Everybody has, as you were saying before, 20 year old, they have a different risk. 50 year old, they have a different risk as well. And even within different communities, you could see that they have different risk tolerances too. Mm -hmm. So there's an asset class for everybody. Else. Now, um, can somebody withdraw from their RSP? Right. So uh, as I was mentioning before, right, you can withdraw from an RSP. So it's not necessarily locked in there. If it's normal RSP, it's not locked in there. You can withdraw it. But the thing is, is that you're going to have to pay tax on the amount that you withdraw. So if it's under 5,000, that's 10% tax. Between five to 15,000, that's 20%. Anything over 15K, that's 30% tax. Yeah. So okay. it, it, it is taking a lot of our, out of our investment, but that's because the plan is specifically made for retirement. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, that's the incentive to keep it in there till retirement. Okay. You know, it's great, but it's good for anyone that's like facing hardship yeah, or exactly. anything to know that, hey, can we put it here and I can still withdraw it if I ever had to, right? Yeah. So it's good. So tell me a bit about a RIF. Right. So now what happens exactly when somebody retires, right? Uh, you can't keep it in an RRSP because the RRSP is the investment vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody reaches retirement age or if they reach age 71, that RRSP has to be converted into something. So that is called the RRIF or the RIF, right? And uh, actually another thing is, is so there's something called a Lira as well. So let's say that you're working in a job right now mm -hmm. and they're contributing into a, a, some sort of pension account. When you leave that job, you're not going to be able to take that money in uh, with you so that money will actually be in a locked in retirement account or called a lira so a lira when we go to retirement age uh that gets converted into a lif and then the rrsp that gets converted into a rif okay so then they're basically a rif to my understanding is also they're paying you out every month so you have to take a minimum payment each month yeah. too so like over the next 30 years that you're paying out your rsp to your it's getting paid out so yeah. then the other thing is beneficiaries like can you have a beneficiary on your RSP or what happens if like you know somebody passes away and they have an RSP okay so uh, the thing about a RSP it depends on what the type of asset is mm -hmm. right so for example if it's in um, stocks or uh, mutual funds right there's a chance that we, we might not be able to name a beneficiary but if it is with seg funds we can name a beneficiary mm -hmm. Right, so what what is the advantage? It saves us a little bit of the uh, hassle on the estate, um, the, the probate process. Uh, now, let's say somebody does end up passing away and they have an RSP. If they have a living spouse, that money uh, that gets a spousal rollover. So that automatically, or w w with some paperwork, of course, it, it gets transferred to the spouse's uh, RSP. Mm -hmm. Now, if I don't, if we don't have any other surviving spouses, that goes into our estate. And then after taking out taxes, that's how it gets transferred to our beneficiaries or our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when is the last date somebody could invest in an RSP? Yeah. So the last date to invest in an RSP for the 2022 uh, tax year is March 1st. But it's always a good idea to at least sit down with your advisor. Uh, make sure you get the paperwork, everything filed out like a, a week or two prior. So that way you can do some research, look at your goals and your uh, what, what kind of growth you're looking at. Um, and... And just so you get your papers in on time, right? So we qualify for the tax credit. Okay, perfect. That's great. Um, and before we sign off here, uh, how can people contact you if they want you to be their financial advisor? All right. So yeah, feel free to either call or text uh, at my, my, phone, my phone number, 250-580-3375. Or you, you can just hit up Des and she can direct you to me. Yes, I can do that too. So <laughs> thanks for listening to us. And Harjot, thanks for joining us. Thank you so and much. And I'm wishing you the best for this. Wonderful RSP season. We'll right. have you back again soon. Sounds good. Okay. Bye.